Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and uh, I don't know if you caught this or not, because it was honestly kind of subtle, they didn't really make a big deal about this, but uh, Wizards actually had made a couple animated cards, like we're talking 3D full animations on the card art. And no, obviously I don't mean the paper version, but I mean like on social media and stuff, they've been using them on and off where, uh, uh, well, I mean, I'll just show you one. So check this out, we got uh, Billy there, our friend from the uh, storyline. And uh, you know, he's like unfurling his wings and being like, hey, what's up? And there's fire and stuff. I mean, pretty cool, pretty darn cool looking. It kind of makes me wish they could do like a Harry Potter thing, you know, with like the animated uh, newspapers and all that, where they would have like a looping actual photo on the actual paper cards, that'd be pretty sweet. But of course they would find a way to misprint it. I mean, if they can't even put ink on paper, I can't imagine what fresh hell that would be if they tried to implement this technology with like OLEDs and batteries. It'd probably just burst into flames in your face. Now I was gonna say that, oh, obviously they started with a 3D model and then just like freeze framed it on the coolest frame and then used that for the card art. And then I realized that this actually does not look like the card art. So no, I'm pretty sure instead of uh, like, you know, artists, we've got 3D modeler now. No, I'm pretty sure they just kind of made a 3D model of it and then framed it so pretty cool and i thought hey let's show off the rest of them because they had them on uh, just one distinct website that kind of went under people's radar honestly now this one though of danitha which uh looks awesome it's really a shame her younger brother turned out to be a complete dork instead of super cool like she is but uh this detail is interesting i mean i couldn't find matching frames but like it almost seems like double the work to do this twice so the first one the, the still one may have been hand painted and somebody just replicated in 3d i mean i'm not saying you couldn't do that in fact the left side uh a stained glass window is not there in the other version but you can turn layers and objects off so i mean i don't know those stained glass windows look awfully similar the armor looks awfully similar i mean i really think that somebody did make this one in 3d well, I mean, obviously, and then, I mean, they freeze-framed it and used that as the uh, card art. And, of course, you can, like, hyper-render, like, the, you know, the, the metallic sheen and the lighting and the shadows and, you know, uh, white balance and correct it and get the black level, you know, and the contrast ratio all locked in. So the little subtle differences uh, are one thing, but to recreate all that stuff, like those intricate things on the top in 3D after somebody's already like painted it by hand, I think this one was a screen grab of the 3D. And then it was just like digitally enhanced. So that's actually pretty cool. I mean, I say they're both art. If you're a 3D artist, you're an artist. I mean, I can't do either of those. 2D, 3D, none of that. Never really learned. But oh my God, can I face swap people in Photoshop, especially my Facebook friends. Just nobody's safe at this point. Next up, check this one out. We've got Jaya Ballard using Fight With Fire, and she's just generating some cool-looking, like, fire stream thingies. I don't know what's going on. It looks kind of like Ghost Rider. I like it. Now, for this one, the card art looks like they didn't grab it from 3D. They painted it and then made a 3D version. So, I don't know. Maybe they did some one way, some the other. I don't know. Or maybe they just stylized it and changed the angle to the point where it doesn't resemble this particular animation loop. Either way, super cool-looking. Next up, check it out, it's ya boy Karn Scion of Urza. Now he's not back quite yet in the storyline, but here he is uh, closing the book and I guess saying something, I don't know, looks cool. Looks like he's in some kind of like cool library cathedral thing next to a cool looking like ornate globe. Oh, if you're one of those flat planers who say that all the planes are flat, um, there's your proof right there, that's a sphere. Oh, let me guess, next you're gonna say that when Space Jace landed on the moon it was faked. So I do like how, you know, his head's popping out of the artwork because that's like a thing that all planeswalkers do. It's been a thing ever since they were invented, I think. It's supposed to like indicate their power and how they break the rules by traveling between planes and stuff, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's cool. Next up, we got this cool like slow motion animation of the weather light flying past. And oh my gosh, I love this one. This is probably my favorite. I would love to hear like an actual measurable metric of how fast the weather light can go because uh, at the end of the Rivals of Ixalan storyline, we just got a description from Jace that it was traveling like impossibly fast, like faster than any natural object he's ever seen. Remember, he actually planes walked directly to the deck of the weather light by locking onto, I don't know, someone Gideon or something like that. And he was like having trouble matching his speed to it. So uh, I bet this thing's like 500 miles an hour or something. Pretty sweet. Next up, we've got Whisper, who I believe was from the original Fable game. Uh, she's looking a little different now in this picture, but hey. Kind of got like a pale emo thing going on. Looks like she might have uh, started a cult. Or perhaps joined one. Obviously, this would be uh, the Cabal and their crazy followers. 
And this is just like mega creepy. The amount of just like vector movements and individual pivot points and stuff, man, they put some detail into this. They've even got like the smoke effects. I mean, this is probably the most difficult one to make, I would say. They even got lighting effects and everything. Damn, I would hate to have to make something like this. Now they did post these honestly quite a while ago. So you're probably like, oh, I saw these, but they were so popular that they actually made more of them. Check this out, get ready for the second generation. This one's a uh, Goblin Chain Whirler. Um, really well selling actually. I, I think it's like $4, it's actually really decent. Pretty powerful card and uh, pretty powerful animation there. Um, I mean, clearly it's not a goblin, but I think what they were going for is like, you know, oh, what's popular right now on the internet? Well, cats, dogs, you know, doll, the easy stuff. So they're just like, let's throw a cute doggo in there and have him whip some stuff around. So, uh, I mean, why not? It hits Planeswalkers too, and uh, you know, just look at that animation. It's just, you can feel the viciousness, the power of that weapon. Really, really well done artwork by the artist on that one. Next up, we've got the Antiquities War. I believe that was what they nicknamed uh, also the Brothers War or something like that, I think it was called. I don't know, I'm massacring the lore again, I'm sure. Pretty sure it's just a big old artifact fight between uh, Urza and, I don't know, Mishra or something like that, or his brother, I, I don't remember. And the aftermath was just insane, but I gotta say, the one thing that people remember the most from the Antiquities War is, of course, the famous quote from Urza, bitch, don't bring your words to a shovel fight. It's kind of like the Dominaria version of, like, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, I guess. Like, you trying to talk this out and run away, boom, shovel. And, of course, that's an ancient shovel, it's an antiquity. Now, this next one, uh, the Flame of Keld. Um, I don't really know who the Keld are, I don't know their history. I'll be honest with you, I don't quite get this one, but... Oh, I, I get it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm kind of grasping here, but I think this is like an ancient Keld ritual where like you light your pants on fire and then do the honorary dance, and there, it's kind of like you know how like Kaladesh was kind of like India or whatever. Like this is kind of like Native American where they're doing like that Native American dance thing. I'll just call it the two step because I don't know what it is. Yes, I know it's not really the two step. I'm pretty sure that LMFAO in uh, the party rockin' were not Native American. I mean, you know, maybe actually now that I think about it. But yeah, I guess this is like a thing that the Keld would do, so they made an animation of it, I guess. I don't know if it's like a celebration, rite of passage, I don't know, it was pretty cool though. Also, you know how Wizards is always like, oh, representation, representation, like, oh, Indian people won't play the game unless we have some cheap ripoff of India in Kaladesh. Oh yeah, because like my Latino friends are always like, oh, if there's no Latino characters in this movie, I can't watch it. That's, that's the rules. Oh, is there any Asians in your card game? If not, I can't play it. Oh, good. Okay, there's um, there's Kamigawa. Okay, I can play it now. Oh, and all the, all the gay people out there are like, oh, look at all these straight people in the game. Disgusting. I refuse to play it. How dare you? But this time, they nailed it. I'm feeling the love. I knew the carousel would come around eventually. That's right. They're finally representing the thick boys. We got my big chunky brother right here in this animation, and uh, he's white because apparently skin color means everything. So it, it's basically me on the card. For the record, I'm down to like 197. Bro, it's back to Pokemon Go weather, man. I'm going to Pokemon get the hell out of here after I'm done editing this. But anyway, it's nice to see the, the husky white boys uh, out there on the cards uh, lighting their pants on fire. That's, that's just wonderful. I feel so much more represented and accepted. Thanks, wizards. Next up, we got Song of Frey Elise, and this one I do get the reference, actually. A little bit of a lore spoiler here, because I am a bit of an expert on this, um, but that's Dance Dance Revolution. That's really, honestly, a brilliant way to represent the Song of Frey Elise, but uh, yeah, Frey Elise was a huge DDR player. Uh, she actually became the Queen of the Elves by uh, beating the former Queen at Midnight Blaze on Heavy, and that just so happens to be exactly the dance track that they're showing in the background. Oh, and uh, if you're not familiar, if you didn't read the book, uh, Frey Elise ended up making Midnight Blaze the new national anthem. So that is just fantastic. And the last one that they made is, of course, everybody's favorite, Yargle Glutton of Urborg. Now, you can see they used a little bit different of a 3D model for this one. I mean, if you're thinking, okay, Yargle's supposed to be a giant frog spirit, but I mean, at least in this one, they, they really showed the glutton of Urborg part, you know, because he's really chowing that banana. I mean, I think the main difference is the lighting. I mean, you can see it's a very bright room, very bright background that just went with, like, matte white, basically. So I think it's not that far off, and like I said, you really get the glutton part. So hey, let me know which one you guys like the best down in the comment section. And uh, hopefully Wizards keeps making these for the future sets, because they look really cool. I'll see you guys next video.